Welcome to our show, The Sound of the Trumpet. I'm your host, Faith Marie Batsko, bringing you critical insight and revelation to position you securely in Christ for the season ahead. Welcome to The Sound of the Trumpet. Thank you for joining me. And today we're going to talk about grace. The title of today's message is, Who is Sufficient for These Things? I was recently awakened in the middle of the night with a burning question in my heart of what would the Apostle Paul and the disciples do in the situations that believers are now faced with in Canada, the United States and other parts of the world? How would they live, walk and comport themselves? In my mind's eye, I was seeing these apostles as bigger than life and present in our world. And I sought God for the answers to these questions, but received none. The following morning, as I was reading a devotional, God provided the answer. The devotional talked about the early Christians and the situations they were facing. I saw that they were similar to the things we are now beginning to encounter in Canada and in the United States. The disciples were being restricted in what they could speak about or teach. They were being disparaged by some of the religious leaders who feared man rather than God. There was a rising level of persecution against Christianity and Christians were being threatened daily. The present woke culture, and I hate that word, um, is being pushed now on humanity. It is a demonic crafting of a new reality founded on satanic antichrist principles. Becoming woke is the awakening of the masses to the demonic principles of division, immorality, and a hedonistic lifestyle being espoused through equity. The road to truth leads us not to equity or even equality, but rather to crucifixion, to the cross, to a life laid down in full surrender and obedience to God, to the one who said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I do realize that it is somewhat different to be born into a situation of persecution as the disciples were, than it is to watch the freedom that you have known all your life begin to be taken away from you incrementally and systematically. So again, my thought was, what would the saints do? What did the saints do? The disciples continued to press forward and to, and to do exactly what they were called to do. They prayed. They asked God for courage and boldness to speak. They asked God to strengthen them in the situations that they faced. As they were obedient, there was a great awakening to the knowledge of truth. Acts 4 reveals the persecution they were experiencing. However, verse 33 says that great grace was upon them all. Great grace. The answer leaped off the page into my spirit and I saw it. The answer was God's grace. I suddenly saw that grace brings whatever is needed. Grace is favor power and all the goodness of God wrapped into one. The disciples asked God to increase the power and he turned up the grace and gave them great grace. At one point when Paul complained to God about the attacks on his life, God said to him, my grace is sufficient for you for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecution, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. What is grace? Well, grace is the divine substance 
that releases the ability to walk supernaturally through any situation without fear. Grace undergirds and empowers the believer in Christ, the one who lives and moves and has his being in Christ, thereby tapping into his life substance. The word grace in the Greek is charis, and it means graciousness, especially the divine influence upon the heart and its reflection in the life, benefit, favor, gift, joy, liberality, and pleasure. In Hebrew, grace is the word chen, and it means graciousness, kindness, favor, precious, and well-favored. We can therefore expect that when God's graciousness is upon us, his divine influence works on our hearts and becomes reflected in our lives. We then experience his benefits, his favor, his joy, his liberality, and pleasure over us as he works all things for our good. Jesus is God. His life force is spiritual substance that is supernatural, creative, imbued with wisdom, insight, and understanding. Grace allows us to tap into the treasures of Christ, a place where there is no fear and where every possibility exists. In grace, the substance of God's life force moves in to take charge of any situation we may encounter. As believers in Christ, we draw from him and receive his grace, his unmerited favor. Grace is embedded with potential to transform our circumstances and our demeanor from weakness and fear to power and strength. Grace is power. Grace brings an atmospheric change, adjusts our perspective, and produces an uncanny sense that all is well. It impregnates the current issue with his divine possibilities. Hope arises because God is in the mix. Grace therefore brings great possibility. How then should we live? We live and walk in the present, ever-changing world by trusting God to provide the grace needed for any situation we may face. In perilous situations, we pray for great grace, knowing that God's grace is sufficient for all things. When Paul and Silas were imprisoned and they began to sing praises to God, they stepped into his life force and grace was released. Their chains snapped and the prison doors were opened. Grace moved Peter to speak without fear, having just been released from prison for that very thing. When Peter and John told the others about the threats they received, they prayed and reminded God of Psalms 2-2 regarding threats to his anointed and his elect ones. It says in Acts 4, 29, 31, they said, Now, Lord, look on their threats and grant to your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word by stretching out your hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken. Paul asked the sublime question, who is sufficient for these things? The answer is no one. God's answer is, my grace is sufficient for you. The veil was rent at the cross and grace, the life force of Christ, was released on humanity. The Savior came to release his life that was full of grace and truth. The door into the kingdom was opened on Pentecost as grace ushered in those who believed. It was poured out on the house of Cornelius, welcoming the Gentiles into the family of God. The disciples prayed for doors of opportunity to be opened for them to share the truth 
and the Lord answered them. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 16, 9, For a great and effective door has opened to me, and there are many adversaries. Grace allows us to walk supernaturally through a natural and complex world. Grace moves obstacles out of the way and provides the peace to handle the difficulties of life. Grace is a gift. Faith is the substance, the buying power that purchases grace, favor, and divine possibilities. The Holy Spirit is the final arbiter of grace. He said that it was not by might or power, nothing is possible but for His Spirit. God's grace releases the Holy Spirit in power. The angel that spoke to Zerubbabel told him that the mountain before him would become a plain and that when he shouted grace, grace to it, he would complete the work on the house of God in the headstone. You can read that in Zechariah chapter 4 verse 7. The angel then asked Zerubbabel, what do you see? Zerubbabel's answer was basically oil. Grace brings the oil, the anointing that breaks the yoke, that breaks open prison doors, that transforms situations. How did Paul and the apostles respond? They looked to God to make the way and to open the doors as only God can. Great grace was upon them all. Let grace open the doors of favor needed for you. Shout grace, grace to every obstacle in the path of the promise. In times of uncertainty, grace will show you what to do. You will stand resolute in the strength, courage, and energy of God in the grace of God. You will shine as you rest in Him. In rest and with God's grace, you can walk through anything. Rest is knowing that He is positioned at your side always, regardless of the circumstances. In rest, His fullness is released in you, and His will and His life is poured out through you. In rest, there can be no fear. In the Psalms, God told us to be still and know that I am God. Cease striving and I will be God in your life. You have been called in a time of disfavor to rise in great grace and favor as pillars upholding the foundations of truth. You are called to shine, reflecting the glory of God in times of uncertainty and change. You will exude the shalom peace of God when there is fear and hopelessness all around you. You are the princes and towers of strength God is positioning in the earth. God will make you noticeable by his favor. People will see and take note. They will hear, causing them to grapple with truth and deception. You will exude God and minister his life force with his words and his healing touch. It is possible that God has not yet answered our prayers because he's waiting to see a rise in his people before he removes the restrictions. He is searching for the new breed who have the guts to believe him. Don't judge what other people or other churches are doing as some are called to stay and some are called to go. Some are called to fight, and some are called to clean the fish. Not everyone is called to the front lines. Receive his life and find his grace to find what you need to do. Draw near to the throne of grace to find grace to help in time of need. And that's in Hebrews 4 verse 16. We are meant to be imbued with his grace that we may become stewards of his grace. 
I started this word with the question of how the disciples would live in these present times. Well, the answer is that in the grace of God, they kept moving forward in obedience to the one who would sustain them, who would open the doors of favor to them, and who would preserve them. Who is sufficient for these things? No one but Christ. Our sufficiency is from Him. Lord, I pray for everyone right now listening to this message. God, that they would find the grace that they need in their time of trouble. God, that you will strengthen them. Lord, that they would have the joy that comes with grace. Lord, the the knowing that you are with them, the knowing that all will be well, the knowing that you will take care of things, the knowing that they can walk through anything with you by their side. Lord, I pray that you put that confidence in them, that strength of character in them. Lord, that your life force would rise up within them. Lord, that they would be strong towers and pillars in this time of shaking on the earth. God, I just bless them with your love, with your protection over their lives, over their families, and over their friends, God. Lord, just walk with them and be with them and let the grace of God be sufficient for them. Amen. God bless you and thank you for listening. Help us to get these words out to the body of Christ to rally the troops and those serving the Lord on the front lines. Be sure to subscribe to the show on iTunes and cpnshows.com And please like and share with your friends. See the links below to our website and our social media pages. God bless you and keep you safe and hidden within Him.